In this lesson, we're going to focus on how we can make the MoMA distribution process go much, much faster. And so, for instance, back in the example M3, we had two pinned ends, and it was because of those pinned ends that as we were distributing the effects of releasing the middle joint and shooting out effects to the far ends, that then we had to release them again and shoot back, shoot back, you know, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It was long, it was tedious, it wasn't hard, but it took a long time. And we actually noted some things that happened very quickly, and if we had kind of been clever about when we released things, we could have actually stopped even much earlier um, recognizing ratios that were happening. But nonetheless, this isn't there a way to make this go much, much faster, and the answer is a resounding yes. That many-step problem that was well over 20 steps uh, probably could have been done in one or maybe two steps. And that sounds like a great bargain. And that's what we'll be able to accomplish with the modi modified stiffness approach. Right, so the basic essence <coughs> here is that we can recognize what the, the conditions of the system are and maybe take advantage of that in the following kinds of ways. Right? The normal case here, without any cord rotation, is that the far end has no, re no rotation and so our slope deflection equation reduces down to this form. Right? And there's a big four sitting around that theta that's in the, the near side. So that's kind of the situation where we're saying far end fixed, and we have this fixed end moment that gets applied, and we apply a moment in here, and what's that relationship between all these things that, that are going on? But what if the far end moment is zero, not rotation? In other words, we've got that far end over here to the right, that zero, and we apply this moment. Well, that system is not as stiff as the first one. And indeed, it's a ratio here of four to the stiff one, three to the less stiff one. Or in other words, that's three quarters the regular stiffness. Right now, if we have member loads on there, remember that creates the fixed end moments. Fixed end moments here will be different as a result. Right, so that, that begins to be kind of weird and confusing, but let's step through this. Uh, once again, right? All right. So, if we look at the the flexural stiffness we've got in the normal case here, this theta that's here, the far end is fixed. It takes us then four ek to get a unit rotation. If the far end is free, right, and there's no moment out there, it'll take us only three quarters of much, as much moment to apply to get that unit rotation. If, on the other hand, we have an equal and opposite moment at either end. And now we ask the question, how much moment does it take us to get one unit of rotation? We're going to increase both of them simultaneously now, equal opposite. Then that's half as stiff. It's a lot, it's a lot easier to get that unit rotation. So that's the symmetrical situation. And then the anti-symmetrical is this reverse curvature. Here we have equal uh, moments at each end in the same direction, meaning not frowny face, smiley face, but rather clockwise both or counterclockwise both, then this structure doesn't deflect near as much. It takes more moment to be able to get that unit rotation, so three halves, so 50% more to get that. That's three halves as stiff. These modified stiffness factors will be very useful, and let's see how this plays out. Number one, when you go to get the modified stiffness for that span, you have to use then a different set of tables where you reflect that one of those ends is pinned, that moment is going to be zero, that rotation will be a very specific um, relationship to what happens over at this other end. And so you, for all these different load cases, you now get adjusted fixed end moments. We're going to want the one that's up here, that's 3PL over 16. And I know that because, of course, here's our structure that we're dealing with. This is the same one that we had in example three, that we've got a span of five meters in the left and right. We've got pin ends, roller in the middle. We've got a mid-span 160 kilonewtons. And so here's this condition. Out here, ignore this little A and B business that you see here, right? that just near and far end for C 
we've got, of course, a fixed end moment of 0. There is no fixed end. There is no moment there. Over at the left, we get 3PL over 16. So the far end one, 0. This one will be, and it's going in a, the opposite direction. So really, it's a minus 3 times 160 kilonewtons times L, which is 5 meters divide by 16 and I believe that's going to be 150 All right so 3 times 160 times 5 divided by 16 is minus 150 All right so that's the fixed end moment kilonewton meters of course and let's see how then we apply that in our model this is joint a B and C again All right we're going to go and look at this member originally has a stiffness of K and this one has 2K remember that just comes from I over the L here but we got 2I over L on that one and then we say okay this right hand span will we'll just never lock down that joint we're gonna leave, leave it free when we're gonna apply the load that's how we got these new adjusted or modified fixed end moments and in which case our stiffness of that member was three quarters as stiff as what it was before. So that'll be three fourths of two, and three fourths of two equals one and a half k. We're going to do the same thing for this one, right? You'll flip this model around. We don't have any fixed end moments here, but we'll flip it around, and we'll never uh, fix a either. So we'll have three quarters of k on that one. And so the ratio between these two is still 2 to 1 in this particular instance. It doesn't actually alter the distribution of the moments at that joint, in this case, because they were both had the same relative stiffness along the way, which is what really matters. But here's the really big kicker that is going to mean so much to us, that we have a minus 150 fixed end moment at B, We've got zero out at C now by definition because we're going to release it and we're never going to fix it. So we could put a zero there. Same thing is happening over at the left for other reasons being primarily that we don't have any loads there. But the big thing is is we aren't doing anything at that joint. There's nothing to mirror because when we're setting up this system, what we're going to do is what that condition right now looks like is that we've got the middle one being fixed, middle joint that is, the far one pinned, and we're imposing our 160 kilonewton load, and we're developing a fixed end moment here of this minus 150. Nothing out here. That's the condition that we're at because we've never locked down those. So that means the carryover factor is going to be zero. When we release this, nothing goes over because of course you've got a zero, um, you've got a pinned end. We never have locked it down temporarily. So after that, everything is all the same. We've got minus 150 as our net unbalance at that joint, so that means we need to develop, when we release it, a positive 150 that gets distributed according to each one. And again, there's, I'll show the arrow, but there's nothing that goes over because that far end was never fixed and you might say well then why did we fix it last time because we didn't know about this part yet and in this simple case we're done we've equilibrated the, the middle joint we can release it now we, it's in equilibrium the far ends are in the condition that we want and depending on how you want to count up steps we're done in one step which is pretty darn cool. Now that's, of course, just because we have only a two-span beam. If we had a three-span beam, um, we wouldn't be done in one step, but we would be done in far fewer steps than we otherwise would have been. This is the power of the moment distri or the modified stiffness approach, and we will use it again in another example, <coughs> um, that is uh, M.5, where we don't have a pinned end at the left. Instead, we have a fixed end. We're also going to add a cantilever into the next example.